Um, at the organizational level on the return to work, we've run a ton of studies recently for companies that are kind of thinking about how do we think about hybrid work, right? And who do we bring back for what periods of time and then what constellation? And the network analytics are really well suited for that because you can kind of come in and say, okay, it's not so much this role, this role, this role because of the nature of the work. It's actually these sets of four or five roles because of the interactions between them that we want to preserve, you know, and, and traditional like pure human capital analytics don't see those webs right in the same way. So it's a really nice way to think about, you know, how you're bringing people back. But the, I think the biggest insight to me that's been intriguing is when we would ask all these people in the analytics, um, you know, what do you need to be turning to other people for face to face? versus remote and at the heart of it we would hear in the face-to-face -face interactions it was uh, innovation uh, it was growth in my work and it was getting a sense of energy or purpose right from others um, and so I, that'll be one of the biggest challenges I think for companies as they think about how do they equip their leaders to yeah. use that face-to-face -face time better right you don't want people to just come back and use the two days to default into doing work as they did in the past you really yeah, want yeah. people to be using that time to create energy and purpose growth opportunities and innovation right it, it means a very different thing or approach um, for for groups that are successful and a lot of the companies that i've described that are working with these ideas they're building guides and other things like that to, to kind of transition back differently well, I think workforce planning in a very traditional sense uh, was always looking, let's say, more at capacity planning to say, okay, how many people do we need? What is the supply and demand um, of the workforce? Potentially, if you're going through, let's say, the huge disruption in many industries like digitalization, you're also factoring actually automation to say, um, okay, how can I actually perform the same amount of work with less people because technology is actually enabling me or me as a company um, to do work more, more let's say, efficiently. Um, I think building on that, what we see is that if you give employees new technologies and actually you are augmenting employees to be more efficient um, and being able to do more work or work just in a better way, you also have to think about the skills. And I think that adds a very new dimensions to to, to workforce planning to not only think about how many people will I need, what is the supply and the demand, it's also which kind of employee do I need and what are actually, let's say, uh, the critical skills and capabilities we need as an organization and then broken down to an individual level to say, okay, what is it we have today? And then let's say looking at the strategy overall of the company, of a function, of a line of business and actually saying um, the people we have today uh, to which extent are they actually set up for success in terms of capabilities to execute on our priorities? And I think this is, let's say, really a crucial element where we see, um, especially in the context of digitalization, uh, to say, how can we really set up our employees uh, with the right skills? And then building in, let's say, a third dimension, uh, which is, let's say, all around org design to say, when we know how many people we need, uh, which kind of skills and capabilities uh, do we need, um, what is also then the right organizational setting? Uh, yeah. um, and then in the end, closing the loop, um, also looking into the org design uh, to really ensure that we can execute our business priority on the right way and really leveraging the full analytical capability reporting through, let's say, data driven. I mean, productization uh, in the way that I think about it is critical to how you scale right and this is why like i've personally invested uh heavily on my team into data engineering data science and research right without these products like data sets and data pipelines algorithms nlp like topic models um io and ob theories and logical frameworks like Again, it becomes an endless firefight on number crunching on like Excel or Google Sheets or whatever your preferred spreadsheet is, right? Building decks that need to be refreshed every now and then when an executive remembers, oh, I, I like that. Like, can you refresh that for me um, so I can see if it's still applicable, right? Um, 
And that, I think, wipes consultants and analysts and people analytics out. Like that, that sort of Groundhog Day, you know, experience is uh, is really sort of um, uh, demotivating, right? Yeah. Um, and so, especially like at Salesforce, when we're adding all these new employees and all these new leaders, you know, creating the right product infrastructure is critical to getting all of the new people leaders plugged in and ready to go um, at scale, right? And so that's why we constantly think about it from a product perspective because of our growth, because we're bringing in all of these new people, all of these new leaders, like we can't keep producing like random cuts of things for these new leaders all the time because then it's just churning out these, you know, these PowerPoint presentations or these Google slide presentations. Um, and that's not enjoyable for most people. And that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily help move the business forward. It just keeps sort of maintaining things. So that's why we think about productizing things that we do, ensuring that if we're doing an analysis, we're making it into a product of some sort, meaning like it's scalable, it's repeatable, it's something that, you know, our data infrastructure supports so that when a new leader comes in, it's just a push of a button in order to get you your cut versus having to do some special thing um, all the time. I have, I was lucky when I stepped into this role to already have this incredible people analytics team that was already established. I've talked to a lot of my peers who don't have as rich of, a, uh, of an organization or don't have an organization and, and are starting from scratch. And so to step into this role and have this incredible team, uh, I would say data is used in, in everything. And in fact, I'm pulling together a deck for the board uh, in June and for our exec staff where I do my annual people update. And I was just reviewing uh, the deck yesterday and it's all data. <laughs> Data then leading to insight. I mean, yeah. truly, I, the, the way I'm organizing the deck is to say, what is the insights we're getting around recruiting and, and our ability to attract uh, talent and, 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 you know, especially versus the competition? And what does the data say? What's the insight? What's the so what for the board? What's the so what for our exec staff? What are we seeing around manager excellence and what our employees are saying around what works with managers? What are the behaviors that are most valued? What are the behaviors that are the biggest detractors? And how do I share that data? Um, what are we seeing with diversity and inclusion? What are the insights, whether it be diverse slates or other levers that we're pulling that make a big difference? Um, without going through my whole board deck, I, <laughs> I, I would just tell you that data is and insights are essential to everything that I'm talking about hybrid. What are we learning about hybrid? what's working in this current uh, environment, how can we marry workplace analytics with people sentiment and insights that then drive what we're doing in terms of how we're setting up the, the new hybrid work environment, both around policies, around people, but also the, the physical environment. Um, so yeah, data is, uh, uh, is absolutely key to everything we're doing. It's not just related to uh, one, one dimension of the function, I would say it's needed in, in all areas and fuels the insights and, and helps us make better decisions in all aspects of the business. But you both have crystal balls into the future because of the perches you sit on. What do you see? What's, what's coming in the next few years? I'd like to leave David to answer to have the final say because he is as i said up front as you acknowledge dave he's just the world's best curator so he's got a library a wikipedia in his head of stuff <laughs> my, to, to set him up my only my only uh my my i think this is about moving beyond the organization's people it's the outside in societal impact on community i think it's all the the, the topics of if i can help my organization you know if, if an executive a ceo can help their organization be more inclusive be more racially um, accepting be more um, uh, sustainable and, and you know create 
a purpose in their organization that has employees that all fit to that and, and, and it gets better, then if, if thousands of organizations around the world are doing that, then the whole of society gets better. So I know that's very big and very grand, but for me, that's where people analytics will go. It, it will truly go to affecting society. Just to add to that, I, I mean, in many respects, people analytics is only really scratching at the surface. I mean, obviously, in some organizations, it's much more embedded than others. Um, and I think we've seen with the pandemic that the uh, people analytics teams and a number of organizations have really stepped up. They're working closer with their, their CEOs and their boards to, to shape really important topics around future ways of working. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe by your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.